Greetings, I'm Professor Lee Jun Seok of Dangguk University School of Dentistry. Today, I'm going to talk about treatment planning for posterior implants. In order to come up with diagnosis and treatment plan, we need to utilize all the knowledge we have and make diagnosis and come up with treatment plan. The position, size, antagonist relation, interarch relation, occlusal factors, there are many that needs to be considered. Because of the time constraint, I'm going to talk about a few factors in terms of fixed prosthesis. This is a short clip, therefore I'm going to talk about placement principle and I'm going to talk about what can happen clinically if we don't stick by it. The number of missing teeth and restoration. Depending on how this is done, I'm going to talk about what requirements are required before ending the clip. First, I'm going to talk about basic considerations for positioning of posterior implant. The first function that the posterior teeth serves is providing outstanding mastication and after that, it maintains a causal relation and maintains occlusion. It prevents pathological conditions. In order to do this at centric occlusion, there needs to be maximal intercuspation, stable occlusion, and definite vertical stop. The posterior restoration needs to withstand occlusal force and minimize flexural and bending stress so the patient can use it conveniently for a long time. Now I'm going to talk about where it should be placed. In order for implant to function ideally for a long time and minimize complication, ideal placement is imperative. From buccal occlusal and mesiodistal view, let's look at what is the ideal position of implant placement. From buccal view, the implant needs to be placed in middle of a mesiodistal width and it should be in parallel with the axis of adjacent teeth. If the axis are different, it needs to be in parallel with the compromised axis. Also, with adjacent tooth, there needs to be at least 1.5 millimeter of bone in order to withstand the voluntary resorption of bone. From occlusal view, the implant placement position should be in line with the central group of adjacent teeth. On buccal side, there needs to be at least over 1.5 millimeter of bone left to withstand restoration. On the other hand, in the lingual or palatal side, if the bone width is over 1 millimeter, then it is known that there will be no problems. From buccal view, buccal lingually, the implant crown needs to be in harmony with the antagonist. This is where the implant needs to be placed. If there is no antagonist or if there is positional issues, it needs to be placed in neutral zone. Now let's look at what kind of problems could occur with posterior prosthesis if implant is not placed in ideal position. The implant that we use most frequently is conical seal type. This is TS type implant in Austin. If we are to fabricate TS type implant, the center of axis is formed 3 mm below the implant. Two mm, four mm, and six mm from the axis, let's assume that 250 Newton centimeter of vertical load is applied. If such vertical load is applied, 
The amount of momentum is determined by the sine value, which is an angle by adjoining the distance away from the center of axis. With just a 2 mm difference between 4 mm and 6 mm, there is 34% difference of momentum. In conclusion, this increase in momentum can lead to increased possibility of screw loosening or fracture or implant body fracture. We see a lot of these cases. In the case of lower, when we place in the most distal tooth because of the lack of mouth opening, at times implants are placed like this. In this case, bone is resorbed from the buccal area to the palatal area, therefore buccal cantilever effect can be observed. If implant is placed like this because lateral force is applied and off-axis loading is done, unlike the anterior area, in posterior area the clinical crown length is short, and therefore frequent dislodgement can occur. In this case, rather than using cement retained type, you should use either screw retained or dual retention type of prosthesis for the patient. This needs to be considered in the treatment plan. Let's move on to the next case. In this case, implant has been placed more palatally. If you look at the image on the left, the buccal contour is ordinary. However, due to inappropriate overlap, cheek biting was inevitable. In this case, as shown on the right, even though there is an over-contour on the buccal side, we need to refabricate the prosthesis once again to provide a horizontal overlap to prevent a cheek biting. There can be increased food impaction due to over-contour and patient discomfort can increase. In this case, you need to inform this to the patient ahead. In this case, three implants are placed, each in upper and lower. If you look at how the implants are placed in the upper and lower, it looks nicely placed. However, when we check occlusion, you can see that it is a crossbite. Such result came to be because the surgeon ignored the neutral zone and only looked at the ridge condition when placing the implant. As shown on the right, the lower needs to be significantly adjusted and as for the upper, the prosthesis is buccally excessively inclined. In the case of upper, it will be over-contoured on the occlusal side, and as for the lower, the cervical area will be over-contoured. In this case, food impaction will not be able to be prevented. This case is related to inappropriate axis. When multiple implants are placed, the direction and position of axis becomes more important. If you look at the case on the left, the axis looks parallel, but there's about a 2 mm of bone in between two implants. The case on the right, it has appropriate amount of bone, but the axis itself is inclined towards the occlusal side. Therefore, it has a convergent form. In both cases, in interproximal area, it is very difficult to provide appropriate crown form. If you look on the left, on the interproximal area, it was very difficult to provide appropriate crown contour. And on the right, it's the same here.
The two crowns look almost as if they're stuck with each other. These cases did not look particularly problematic, however, 6-7 years later, due to chronic inflammation with time and the interdental zone, bone loss could not be avoided. Therefore, when we do multiple implant placement, placing them parallel to each other is very important, but also we need to place implants in a way so that when designing prosthesis, it is not difficult to provide that. To summarize what I've discussed thus far, along with placing the implant in an ideal position, we need to consider the antagonist relation and the materials to be used this is essential for maintaining function and longevity of posterior implants. Please remember these six factors. Next, I'm going to talk about what kind of designs are possible for multiple missing teeth and what needs to be considered. First, I'm going to talk about when two teeth are missing. You can make two single crowns or make a bridge type of prosthesis. Let's look at the pros and cons of split form and splinted form. If implant prostheses are provided separately, it is easy to retrieve them. Therefore, there is more flexibility in terms of implant path, and even if there is complication, you can treat it separately. It is easy to maintain oral hygiene. However, it may take more time in adjusting and delivering the prosthesis. Moreover, in terms of low distribution, it may be slightly unfavorable. When they are in a two-unit bridge form, retrievability needs to be emphasized even more. In order to do this, implants need to be placed more parallel with each other to be able to retrieve posterior prosthesis. Or else, because of undercut, once it is connected, you may not be able to retrieve it. In the case of bridge form implant, because the interdental area is connected, it is more favorable for stress distribution and there is little possibility of food impaction. Even more, the time necessary for adjustment is quite short but it has connector and below that there can be food impaction therefore the patient will need to maintain oral hygiene very carefully next i'm going to look at three missing case when three teeth are missing it is recommended to place three implants at times you can place two implants and make three unit bridge First, let me show you when I place three implants. You can make three single unit prosthesis can be provided or you can make them into one unit prosthesis. As mentioned in the previous slide, you need to weigh the pros and cons of making single crowns or making bridge type prosthesis. The decision as to which is more favorable needs to be made for different cases. In the case of three teeth missing, at times, you only place two implants. In this case, implants are placed on both sides. If only two implants are placed, load is concentrated inevitably and the prosthesis needs to be able to withstand flexural stress. At times, there is absolutely no choice but to form the prosthesis in the cantilever form. If cantilever design is used, epidemiological factors need to be emphasized. 
The ability to withstand the load goes down, flexural stress goes up by two times. In the connector area, securing occlusal gingival width becomes extremely important. Also, we need to consider what kind of retention type that is going to be used. In the case of posterior area, a lot of occlusal load is applied and there is very little space vertically to provide restoration, so there can be multiple issues. If you look at the lower left image in this slide, connector area, the strength was attempted to be maximized. You can see that from wax up, a lot of attention has been paid. Despite that, because of lack of occlusal gingival width space, as shown in the upper right, the forcelin fracture continues to occur. In that sense, compared with distal cantilever, the prognosis is, is known to be better for mesial cantilever. The reason is occlusal force is reduced and you can strengthen the connector area in the canine area rather than the posterior area. When there are four teeth missing, as shown, various cases exist. The best results can be achieved by placing four implants. If four teeth are missing, we can place the three implants and frequently we provide the bridge form prosthesis. In various cases, you need to weigh pro and cons to come up with posterior design and set your treatment plan. By doing this, you'll be able to get good results. In order for prosthesis to function and to minimize complication, implant needs to be placed in ideal position and minimal bone width needs to be secured. Also, it needs to be in balance with antagonist and adjacent to teeth. In multiple missing cases, there are clear pros and cons between doing single crowns or providing bridge form of prosthesis, especially in terms of retrievability, stress distribution, and vertical space as well as antagonist relation needs to be considered in coming up with a treatment plan. Today, I have discussed about diagnosis and treatment of posterior implant. The importance of aesthetics is less in posterior area compared with anterior area. However, occlusal load is more significant and it is close to masticatory muscle. Also, a lot of flexure stress is applied. The implant prosthesis needs to be able to withstand such circumstances. If you look carefully at these factors and come up with treatment plan, I believe you'll be able to provide implant treatment with minimal complication and that can be maintained long term. Thank you for watching.